Hello, Internet, and welcome to Ship of the Week, a show where I take your suggestions and try to build them in under an hour. I'll take viewer ideas for ships, vehicles, or other machines, and when the timer starts, I have just one hour to design and build something that fits whatever specifications are set out for me. If I can't finish or the ship doesn't work as intended, it gets scuttled. Ships that do work will be published to the workshop for all to enjoy. Time to hop in and find out what we'll be doing this week in Ship of the Week. So this week we're going to be doing a self-loading cargo rover requested by Echo Mandy. Or, eh, that's probably how you say it. So, this uh, is fairly simple, straightforward, I guess, idea. This is going to be a rover of some sort capable of loading a 3 by one by one large grid sort of module onto it. So imagine a sort of shipping container sized thing going on the back of a truck that it can then drive around and take it where it needs to go. So yeah, fairly simple. Let's hop down to the planet and get going. All right. So we're back on Earth again. We've got one hour on the clock. Away we go. So, uh, again, as I've done in the past, uh, reactor, we're just going to make a quick sort of building stalk, do a good shift F10 down to the bottom, slapper full of uraniums, okay, so, my idea for this uh, have those, and then maybe we'll use these fancy wheels. So, this you needs to be essentially a big old truck. Fuel critical. The idea, at least my idea, is that it needs to be relatively off-road capable, because if I want to take a module and take it somewhere... I need it, that somewhere probably isn't going to be just, you know, right across the way on a flat bit of ground. So, we'll just kind of start off building a relatively basic truck frame. Want it to be fairly large because it's going to have to carry something large. Uh, yeah, that should be good. And then maybe there. And there. Uh, oh, and that's a little... That's probably okay that it's a little wider at the back. Uh, I didn't intend it to be so, but... That may, uh... Might help with something... I don't know. I feel like in real life, trucks tend to have wider, wider wheels at the back, so... I'm sure real people have an idea of why that's important. So that is truck frame. Now... A large grid, 3 by one by one sort of module. If I just mock that out here. That is the size we're talking. Three blocks long one block wide, one block tall. So, in small grid, one large block is 15 small ones. So, or five, jeez. Uh, all of this together is 15 small blocks. So, if we count that out, so that's five, 10, 15. That's pretty good, and I'm actually planning on having the sort of cargo tray extend further off the back by a little bit, so that the center of mass of whatever cargo is kind of roughly in between these rear wheels. Don't know why, but it feels right. So, yeah, so we've got that. Uh, one thing I may do here... Let's just kind of... 
I'm building a temporary connector stalk because this area in between the front and rear wheels would be perfect for batteries. So... That is nine. Stick, uh, maybe I use these new ones. No, except I want them one higher. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that'll be good enough. What I could do just to ease the angles together. Something like that, so the slope's not quite right, but this sort of all slopes in together. That should be a pretty good base. I kind of want to leave it on the stalk for a while. I should be able to build around that. Uh, I guess the next thing is we should get the cargo tray. What I'm thinking... Nope. So that is the width of my cargo. If I go... Maybe with some of these... If I go two out on each side, that gives a little bit of wiggle room and I can build a lip so that side to side, something like that, when I put my block in here, it'll kind of fall in the middle and it's protected so it doesn't slide out the sides a bit. My plan is to have the back open so whatever I put on, it can hang out the back of the tray a little bit. But, I think this will work. That's the wrong block. So that is a tray. Uh, let's do some extra supports onto the frame. What I'm actually thinking of doing, uh, this isn't needed anymore uh, the way I'm going to do things but <clears throat> I think it will uh, I think it'll improve the look of it could actually go one further so what I'm going to do so that we have a way to sort of secure down the load I'm going to put landing gear embedded in the deck it used to be that this is how you had to do things. If you wanted landing gear to be flush with blocks, you had to have a gap down here. Uh, nowadays, we have the magnetic plates, which aren't perfectly flush, but are good enough that most of the time that's all you need. But, I don't know, I kind of like these. I like that... Uh, Underneath, you have this sort of structure. It looks like there's some extra bracing for the deck. It adds a nice little bit of detail. Uh, I think the next thing I'll do... I'll have a fairly tall rim there. So, these little side lips, they should be low enough that it's still fairly easy to have a crane mechanism to load stuff onto this bed. But... They'll provide a little bit of side-to-side -side protection. Same with this back wall. A little bit of sliding protection. So that if they don't get locked, or if the module isn't locked down, or, you know, when you're loading it in and you kind of want to bump it and jiggle it around, things shouldn't fall out too many unpredictable ways. Now, we start getting into the complex stuff. So, for a crane, 
We'll need that. We're going to need pistons, hinges, and rotors. I could make a fairly simple crane setup where it's just essentially like a rotor, small, or a piston, hinge, another piston on that hinge, and then, you know, landing gear. Not that one. Where did that go? Critical. It dropped to the ground and I heard it lock, and I don't like it. Oh lord, it's in the wheel. Yeah, that would cause horrible issues later. Uh, anyway. I could do this, and for some situations, this may be enough. This may be all I need. But, for other situations, it probably won't be... And my idea here, I think the original task was something that could carry, essentially it's a merge block, battery, and projector that uh, the requester person, Echo Mandy, it says on my list, uh, uses to project essentially pre-planned bases into the ground. So that's a pretty specific task. I want this thing to be able to do more stuff. I want you to be able to, say, find a large thruster lying on the ground and pick that up. Or, you know, like a refinery type thing. Something that you can use multi for multi-purpose cargo that isn't convenient or intended to be ground down and built on site. So I'm going to make this with a little bit of an overkill crane. And maybe part of how I'll do that is another battery. Or actually. So, this is something that's unnecessary, but I kind of want it anyway. Just have an O2H2 generator and oxygen tank. Basically, this is so. Once I set it up with a cockpit, I can have that cockpit piped up. Uh, there's oxygen on board, and whoever is operating this can go on a long journey on a planet that doesn't have oxygen without worry. So, with that, it will also be a perfect base for our rotor setup with... some hinges placed on it. So what I'm going to do for this crane, you can have it so that the hinge just pulls and pushes, and they can do that for up to a decent amount of weight. Uh, you can actually combine hinges, so if I put like two here and have them both set up to pull, they will add power to each other. But they're infinitely weaker than doing a similar setup with pistons. So on a real crane, you have uh, hinging points that just sort of hinge, but you have the pushing and pulling power done through hydraulic pistons, essentially. If I do with pistons, uh... I probably just want the one. Uh, I could do two, but it can actually cause clang issues with two pistons pulling. But essentially the idea here, so I can sort of show in this, though I've designed it wrong. Uh, so the idea is all of these hinges are off. Uh, this hinge is free rotating, so is this one and this one. The three of them with the piston in the middle creates a offset that allows you to kind of hold this steady and the angle of this bar that'll be going off this way not that one uh is controlled by the extension of this piston so that's the idea uh this won't work as i've designed it these would be connected but that's the gist Oh god, everything's falling. Okay. 
So this is a more correctly designed system. Uh, so hinge off, off, and off. They are all free rotating. If I go into this piston, nope, uh, velocity. If I set this velocity positive, the crane starts to lift. So that is the gist of how this is going to work. And because this piston can push much more strongly than any of these hinges can rotate themselves, this has a lot more power to lift heavy things. Now, probably want to style it better because it's a little ugly, but, uh, one, okay. yeah, that's going to be a pain. But, and this is the gist of what we're working with. So, uh, Fuel I guess I'll just keep going and do the next bit. So, this next chunk of crane has some, uh, important aspects to it. So, similar to this one, uh, all the hinges are off, the piston controls the motion, the only difference is these hinges are set with limits. So, they're basically set up so that they can go straight out, and that's it. So if I show you here, push that forward. Once that first hinge goes 90, the second one starts. This is key to keep the... Uh... Okay, and it may not perfectly work because I've done this slightly wrong. Uh, <clears throat> the idea here is to keep this joint from hyperextending. Basically, if this piston becomes parallel with the bars, it'll no longer be able to pull them back closed. It needs a little bit of angle like this to be able to actually close. Uh... I should have set this up better so that it wouldn't end up in a situation like it can where it won't have an angle, but here we are. Uh, so, I'll probably just set a maximum extension on this piston to about where it is, but the idea is this arm being able to extend out, coupled with this being able to go up and down should allow me enough mobility to pick something up and put it onto the tray. So something that could have been smart. And I may lop this stuff off and do it. Is if I have a piston in here, something that can extend. It would mean that this is, or it would mean that this end can just have essentially a sort of pseudo ball joint so I can have all this with my mag plate on the end that can all be free the rotor probably I don't want free rotating but these can just flop freely so that that can always point down at the ground then I can lower down, pick something up, I can rotate it with that hinge, or with that rotor, but an extension here should help me align better to the bed if I need to. I could put an extension in this arm, uh, but ideally the links are such I won't need it, because how I want this to work is... I can lower this arm down. This one can angle out so it can pick up whatever it needs to. It's okay. Let's do... Yeah. Let's do this real quick. It doesn't like it, but it's fine. Okay. Now it does flex a bit. Oh... Uh, the downside I've tried this before where this is just a one angle and it can work but I found well the issue with the one angle uh as it is now 
Oh boy, uh, I didn't want to send it so quickly. Uh, as it is now, if I fully retract this piston and hope that the grabber doesn't lock onto anything. Okay, we're good. Uh, you can see it folds up to be fairly square and compact. It's not perfect, but it's enough that it would be fairly easy to transport this. Uh, if I just have one angle, it doesn't quite fold up so neatly. Like if I just had one hinge here instead of the two. Uh, it still works and it does solve that hyperextension issue a bit because then this piston can't fully go parallel. But, uh, yeah, this has some benefits to it. So, I think this is more or less set up. We've got our piston in here that should allow us to extend out like so. And that just gives a little bit of uh, forward-backwards convenience to it. Yeah, I think that part's done. I guess we move on to the cab. I feel like this fits best the industrial cockpit. Maybe we try it with one of these sort of original cockpits and see how it goes. Uh, when I say that, my thought of, oh, well, it's better for, you know, some people don't want to have to use DLC, but I've used DLC wheels and DLC batteries. So this probably, we'll go with our gut, because it's not like this is going to be DLC free anyway. Uh... And doesn't quite let me do what I want to do. My idea is that these front wheels are essentially the front of the vehicle. I'll have the cockpit kind of situated above them, kind of roughly here-ish. In fact, I may... So if I do like so... The cockpit will be there. And then over on this side, I'm thinking of having some Energy hydrogen low. engines. Less for any super practical purpose and more just because I think it'll help it look kind of cool and industrial. Have some engines exposed here. Uh, can maybe do... Something like that just to fill in the gaps. Uh, could run them along that way. Just something, it could be useful to have a little bit of essentially fuel store, or uh, power generation capability. Could stick a fuel tank in like that, that I can pipe up fairly easily. Because this thing is kind of intended to be uh, a long distance transport vehicle, I feel it makes sense to have some of these utilities in it. Even if they aren't, you know, critically useful. Could be handy to have all that just for the utility of having something that can sustain itself. It's not perfect, but Kind of has a little bit of interest. Uh, we'll have that there. I'm set to depressurize just to pull air from the outside when there is some. And it'll help 
with this shape. Yeah. So, this is what we got. Got headlights. There's some kind of basic utility in there. I could maybe... Uh, yeah, just to cover. Stick that there. I did add this turret controller. Uh, the only thing it can really do on this is this hinge. But I do find it useful to have something controlled by a mouse. And it makes the hinge control for the rotor, makes the rotor controls much more fine. Uh, the pistons I'll have to do probably with uh, hotbar commands, but that's fine. So let's go ahead and set that up. Uh, so advanced rotor 3x3 three three is for that. Uh, we should be good. Yeah. Good to control that. Uh, now I may want to share. Let's see if this causes everything to explode. So if I share inertia tensor, tensor on the hinges, it should keep all that much more rigid. Uh, Fuel. I probably want to do it on this one too. Just to keep that rigid. And then I should name some of these so that I can find them easily. We'll have that be advanced order hand, and everything else should be fairly easy to find. So. That one we may just control manually. Uh, it should be fairly easy, and we can technically control this entire crane manually. But, I feel like it makes sense. I probably want them on hotbar too. I feel like it makes sense to have the ability to control this from the cockpit. Let's try increase and decrease velocity. How much does that do by? Way too much. Right. Uh... So... My best bet may be to just do reverses and on-offs. I don't love doing it this way, but I think it'll be the most safe bet. And we'll have switch lock there, and then, uh, right, these four are... the bedlocks. So I think safest bet will be to do it this way. Uh, then I just need to set Fuel critical. minimums, maximums, and all that stuff. Now when driving, this probably... I may actually stow the crane forward when driving, because this won't fit when there's a box under here. But... Uh, So that has a little bit of velocity. Let's give this just a little bit. That one already has it. Uh, this one's maximum distance. I'll put there. Okay. So... Yeah, so that's nice and controlled. I can use the on-off to kind of time it correctly. If I put it forward when stowed, I can build this back up. Because I want it there. So. Stow the crane up here like so.
Oh, it works pretty perfectly. Fuel critical. That should let me control everything. We have four and a half, or four minutes and 50 seconds. I want to paint. That's real quick. One. Set that up. Uh. So, we want handbrake on and off. Uh. Headlights on and off would make sense, but we can ignore that for now. I mean, a battered gray. Does sort of make sense. There are a whole lot of subgrids. All right. Let's set the time of day somewhere useful. Uh, uh We have one minute and 27 seconds left on the clock. And I think... Let's move to the side that we can see it from. I think this is a... Uh, oh. I think this is a done vehicle. Uh, move it out of the way of that. Fuel critical. Yeah. It's got a crane arm. It's got a tray. Got some lights. I kind of wanted to put a bumper up here, but we're out of time because I already paused the clock. Uh, so I think this is how we'll test it. All right. So, uh, I'll have to come up with a name for this thing, and then it's off to testing, which should be somewhat interesting on this one. Alrighty. So, here we have, uh, cred. What do I name this? Uh... You know... It looks like a Hubert. I'm thinking Hubert... Hubert Heavy Cargo Rover. Beautiful name. Could use an antenna or beacon, but I guess it doesn't really need one. So, we've got a Hubert. It is set up with its crane and its bed ready to roll. We have this, your reactor system module thingy, and 3.22 kilometers away on the side of that mountain, we have a work site. So my mission is to load this with the crane onto the Hubert, drive down and through this valley up to that work site, unload this and connect it to a merge block on the base over there. So, guess let's get going with that. So if I kind of... Mosey up next to... That should be good. And hit park. Control the crane. And then. Raise that up just a little bit. Uh, actually, a little more. And then deploy the elbow. So, once that gets good and extended... Uh, maybe like there. Spin her on around. I can reverse that a bit. Bring that in a bit. 
my goal is to get this kind of dead center. Which could be about there. So lower that a bit. Extend like so. Perfect. Wait for the hinge. Well, or I'll just hit the button. Okay. So I've now collected this thing. If I then reverse the hinge, up we go. Now this is not a lightweight thing, two reactors. Uh, I could have maybe built some uh, legs I could deploy to secure me more effectively to the ground. But the wide wheelbase, you can see, is the, doing the job. Oh, now I have just realized something. That rotor's not in a great spot on the arm. Really, I should have had the rotor at the very bottom where the mag plate is. But that should be fine. So. Let's extend that out just a bit. Uh, I should be able to actually control it. Advanced rotor hand. Oh boy. Okay. It's a little janky. Nope. Oh, this is kind of... Yeah. It would be much better in a more helpful position but that may just do it uh okay this is very much looking like when they you know people are just throwing something up on a crane and they don't really know what they're doing okay so let's lower like so, and I think I actually want to bring the elbow in a bit. Oh, that's looking pretty darn good. Bring it just a little bit more. Then lower it just a bit more the wrong key because I'm looking at the screen not where I'm pressing I mean that's pretty well in the tray it's not perfectly centered but I think that's good enough so if I let go of you lock it with the uh, deck things that I can't see but I have to assume they worked okay so that is self-loading. Let's go ahead and stow the crane into travel position and hit the road. So still plenty of power to move myself. Uh, right. Now, how best... I mean, I guess I just go for it. I think where I may want to go... Uh, if I can, uh... I can't really point with the cursor because it doesn't follow me. But kind of the right side of the work site looks like a gentler slope. So I think I want to hang... A right as we go here. This looks like relatively comfortable terrain. 
can see our load is staying decently secured back there. Yeah, this thing seems to be doing all right. It's definitely on the large side, but that's what we need. Uh, it makes sense as sort of industrial equipment. I could have maybe brought the back wheels in closer, though in truth that would have meant, uh, at least how I did it, for getting any sort of stabilizing landing gear. Uh, it may have struggled to pick up the load. There would be room for stabilizing stuff down along the batteries. I probably should have put some in, but yeah, here we are. The crane arm does look a little silly. Here's a little valley, so this will be a decent test. So, it can handle being sideways. Oh, it's got plenty of power to make it up a you know, decently steep incline. Now, I think I want to go over here. I mean, it drives pretty well. I'm not putting it through its paces, but we're going kind of averaging 30 meters a second and it's not really putting up a fight and it doesn't feel like it's about to tip over. The weight is pretty well balanced, though some of this may test it. Uh, okay. Uh, so far, so good. This looks like a little bit of rough. Oh, yeah. We definitely got a bit of air bumping over that. Oh, but there's the work site. I could probably, uh, given how this thing is handled, I could go to the very top of the mountain if I wanted. I feel pretty confident about it. Okay, and then plenty of clearance to get up over the slope. Now, this will be a bit of a test because this requires precision. So here we are, there's the merge block I need to connect this to. So if I go ahead, extend this out. Extend that out. Get myself ready to lock back on. Okay. That's pretty darn good. Okay, we're locked on there. Unlocked from the deck. Let's raise her up. Yeah, this is the only issue. Uh, here. Let's extend that out just a bit, and then... Oh, boy. Okay. This isn't ideal. 
Uh, right. <laughs> We're a little bit sideways. It's decided to magnetize in the wrong way. Uh, I guess if I keep lowering. Okay. Well, it locked. That's good. Uh, Fuel critical. Let me turn that off. Oh crud! And it's not gonna unlock because. Fuel critical. Uh, okay. There we go. So. Now it's free again. I want to lock it, make sure I can lock it the correct way. Uh, but I'd say that's less a failing of the... Uh, it was caused because the vehicle fell over. So maybe it's a bit of a failing on the vehicle. But it's also a bit of a failing of uh, the mag blocks. Okay. Fuel critical. So I'm going to do this manually this time. Just because I can. There we go. So now if I turn that on. It magnets in on its own. I can release myself. Okay. Fuel critical. So. It's not perfect. Uh. That is probably its biggest struggle is when it has to extend out to try and pick something up off the side. Which is a downside because that's kind of the design of it. But I also am pretty far away. Had I been closer, which is kind of how it's designed to be, it would probably work better. But, I mean, it did the test. Uh, it did it scarily, but it did it. So I think I can certify this as a success. So yeah, the Hubert Heavy Cargo Rover, or whatever the heck I called it. Uh, Self-loading crane, fairly easy to operate, pretty good driver, gotta be honest. Uh, I think it works pretty well. So, you can check that out in the workshop. You can also check out any of the other videos I've done. Thank you all for watching. Bye-bye.